Good morning, um, or evening, whenever you're watching this. So I'm gonna to talk to you about the Colad Snap System. <laughs> and uh, I've had it for a while. Like with everything that I have in, I need to understand it and then be able to give you some informed decisions, especially as though some of you actually had some questions about it or some uh, negative points. So I wanted to test them out and make and see whether I had the same issues that you did. And so today we're going to talk about the different cup sizes and we're going to talk about the issues that a couple of you highlighted. So I hope you find this all useful. Right, the cup sizes. So traditionally Coland have had um, three cup sizes, which was the 350, the 700 and the 900. And they came in a 90, 130, 190 and 280 micron filters. Each one is color coded. So the 90 is white, the 130 is blue, the 190 is green, and the 280, which is for primer, is red. But they've recently brought on, for the smart repair market, their little small smart snap lids. And these are 88 mil. So the two that I would primarily use in this workshop is the 350 and the 88. Um, not a lot of times will I use the 88 for clear coat unless I'm just doing one bumper corner. It would mainly be for my color. Because I don't normally have to mix up more than sort of 50, 60 mil of paint. So 88 mil is plenty to do two corners. Right, so let's move on to the cup itself. Um, and the one I'm gonna focus on today, well, well, we will be doing a demo on this, just to show you how the, the lids work, but we will be primarily focusing on the new snap lids. So what I wanna show you today, because a lot of you have had some issues with this, is how to close the lids. And they are called snap lids. Um, and I think some of you have mentioned that the, the actual cups themselves have cracked when you've tried to do it. And this could come down to the way that you're trying to close the lid. It doesn't work with a direct force straight down. So in this next clip, you're going to see the ideal method of closing the, lid, the lids on both of these cup systems. You can see this is a little bit more flexible in this cup than the actual larger one. Right, so let's show you the correct process of closing the snap lids. The correct way to put the snap lids on is at an angle, as you can see. Put the back section where you've got the valve, push that down and you'll hear it click in. That's where the name snap lid comes in. And then feed it round the rest. There you go, snap. So that is the way to do it. If you try and put this lid on at a direct angle, you could end up breaking it. I'm not saying you will, but if you've got someone that's heavy handed, you may, and that's not the way to do it. Putting it on directly as well on the smaller, lighter cups will be quite tricky. Um, so again, the process is at an angle, slide it on, and then just work your way around. So do that, and you will not have an issue with these cups. Now to move on to what you get with these cups. Um, so you get a little lid, as you can see. Um, you don't get a lot of these actually. I, I would prefer it if you got more. I think you get sort of a dozen or something in the pack. So it's nothing when you think that there's 50 in a, a container. Colon have also brought out for their snap lids a actual lid. So when you mix your paint, the smaller ones are not easy to take off, let's be honest. So sorry, there you go. So when you mix your paint, um, they've actually got a little cover that can go on this, a little lid. So you can then give it a good shake up and mix it in that before putting it on there or use it for storage. I haven't got any of those yet. Um, I'm waiting for some to come in. So as soon as they do, I'll post a picture to my story. Um, what do I think with regards to microns? What would I recommend? So as you can see, I've got the blue one here, which is the 130. That's my... Uh, the 130 and the eight and the 90 are the ones that I go to. So I don't do a lot of 2K priming. 
So I probably wouldn't use the the larger sort of 190s or 280s. Definitely not a 280 anyway. That's too big for me. So let me explain to you why I would use the 90 and the 130 as my preference. Coming back to why I prefer the 130 micron and the 90 micron. I think the 130 is designed, well, I know it is, it's designed for the um, water-based paints and the 190 is conventional and the 280 is primer. But you could use that for um, conventional if you wanted to. You can also use it for clear. However, and that is a good all round of the 130. However, what I really like about Colad, and the, you know, I've been using the Colad strainers before I even started using their, their cups. Um, and that is because they're the only people on the market that make a 90 micron filter in, well, they don't make the strainers anymore, unfortunately. Uh, I think you could probably still buy a few around, but on a whole, they're not producing them. So it's now you've got to buy it in the cup. And it, the reason I like it is because it strains, <laughs> I'll just kick the camera, it strains so well. You know, you'll get everything, especially on solids. And some of you may know this, some of you may not have experienced this, but with solids, uh, solid colors, you can get little bits in your paintwork. And, and if you strain your solid color and you're using a 125 micron strainer or something slightly larger, you'll find that those bits will, they will go through this into your gun, or you can even see them gathered in your strainer when it's dried off. However, using a 90 micron totally eliminates that. You don't need to restrain it. Do you know, in the, old, in the olden days, um, up to a couple of years ago, I was using two or three strainers to just filter it out when I was doing a solid color. I don't have to do that now. It's bish bash bosh bang, straight to this. Um, I don't need to strain my solid colors before putting it into a mixing pot, uh, into a spray gun pot. So that's my, that's one of the reasons I absolutely love these Colad cups. And the fact that they've now introduced this as a, a smart cup, you know, a small sort of 88 mil is even better because you, you, I don't use a lot of product like I previously said. So it just makes total sense. I also use, whenever I'm clearing, um, even if it's on the bigger cups, I will use a 90 micron. And again, it's exactly the same reason. It just gets rid of, stops any contaminants from coming through the gun. Um, now, because of that, and it being such a fine um, filter, some people say they're struggling with uh, the paint feeding through. And you're seeing a couple of videos now, the best way to filter that. But I'm gonna to explain to you the way to do it. Um, and I'm also gonna to explain to you why that possibly happens. So if you're working in a cold environment, you are gonna struggle, your viscosity of your paint will be thicker. So it's gonna to struggle to go through. So what I'd always recommend is luckily for me I've got a heated airline so it warms everything up that that makes things easier my paints are stored in a warmer room so that helps but if you're not and you're out on the road and you struggle with this then just all you need to do is warm your product up before actually using it and if you do that you will thin out the viscosity of the actual product and it will flow super easy now let's move on to how to get the product through from the paint paint cup on the top, paint cup on the top, into the gun, because there will be a, an air bubble down here that you need to basically remove before you can, before your paint float will flow out, otherwise you will have blockage. So let's show you that in this next video. Right, for the purpose of this demo, because um, I don't want to be spraying actual paint or thinners or clear coat and talking to you, I've got a bit of water with some food coloring in it. I raided one of the kitchen cupboards, the baking cupboard, uh, to give you this demo. It's not the best color, but it'll, it'll show you what I mean. So if you were to turn, turn the gun straight over, you can see how you've got an air bubble in there. So you're never gonna, you are gonna struggle with getting your paint through to your gun, which is what I think a lot of you have experienced. But in the next couple of clips where I'm actually using paint, 
you can see how it flows better. It might be a little bit tricky with this because we're using a water with food coloring in it, so the viscosities. Well, you'd think because it's a lot thinner that it would go through, but that doesn't necessarily help because it's gonna be a lot lighter than paint and clear coat would be. The way to do it is just re remove all this air. So just put the pressure down and you can see how it starts to fill up. And as you go along, it'll just continue. So, and that will become fuller, especially with a heavier product than some water. So it continues to flow. And I, I have not experienced, other than, like some of you say you have experienced, I have where the paint has struggled to come through, but that's been my fault because what I haven't done is I haven't cleared the flow, um, that air blockage in there for the liquid to come through, for the paint to come through. So, like I said, in the next two videos, you're gonna see a base coat going through, water-based coat flowing through, and you'll also see the clear. So it'll just show you how it does actually work. Okay, so another issue that I want to address, which what a couple of you have mentioned to me, is that you feel it leaks from this valve. Don't play around with this valve, it's not made to be touched with or tam tampered with. Just leave it, all right? Now, the reason you will be having some leakage from that is because Probably what's happened is you've put your, your clear coat into here or your solvent-based paint. Um, let me just get my gun. So you've put it in there and you haven't removed the air or you haven't gone straight to it. And so what will happen is you've got gases coming off, off your clear coat solvent gas escape happening. So it's putting pressure in the pot. So the best way to do this before you want to start using, if you're gonna have it mixed up and have your gun put on the side for five, 10 minutes, just pull the trigger so that any gas can leak, can come straight out, all right? You're not gonna create a blockage. That'll also help with the, the area here when it comes to, when you actually come to using it and clearing this out quicker. So that is what I have found to be quite a simple solution. And I have literally seen it. I've seen the sort of gas pressure build up there and you've got the, the solvents escaping from where you've mixed it and the reaction between the hardener and the clear. And it's created so much pressure in the pot and it happens to all of them. You can just hear that if you get any sort of PPS pot, shake it up, put it on there. And then if you open it, you can hear a psh. And that is just the chemicals reacting and creating that pressure. Um, and so if you've got a lid on here, or this is actually on, to, on your spray gun, it's got nowhere else to go other than to come up the valve, which is why you will have that issue. So just release, release that or don't cap it until you absolutely need it. Or like I said to you, a really simple fix, put it in the gun, put it upside down, put some tape around your trigger um, and any gas will just naturally escape out of, out of your trigger but you won't get any product going up there and you won't get it messing around with the valve. So hopefully that helps with that little issue that a couple of you have noted. Um, and so let's just really summarize this. It's a really good system. I like it. You know, it's no fuss. You've got a cap that goes on the pot. You've got your filter station system, um, top lid, and you've got your actual cup you've got measurements on the on the larger cups you don't have on the 88 mil. I think for smart repairs, the little 88 mil are perfect. I mean, that I just love them, absolutely love them. And the fact that Colab do it in 90 micron, which are the only manufacturers that make these uh, any of these sort of cups systems and produce it in a 90, 90 micron is just an absolute win for me. Um, try it, see what you think. They work out at about 90p a cup, which I don't think is a lot of money. Um, just makes life easier. So I hope you found that all useful. If you've got any questions, as always, send them over to me, happy to answer them. If you've got any comments, just add them down there because you know the interaction between all of us, we all have different things to learn from each other. I always really appreciate it. Um, and if you're not following me on Instagram, please follow me on Instagram. I am on YouTube, but Instagram is where you'll find me getting up to all my mischief. Right, thanks so much. And thank you for Colad for allowing me to test their cup system.